we'll, we'll, we'll now turn to uh, Dr. Michael Chang, who is a director of uh, the National Eye Institute at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, Dr. Chang. Um, Carl, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, really excited to be here. And I know that the purpose of this session is to talk about potential solutions uh, to these issues. And what I will be doing is just taking the perspective of, you know, what can we offer um, to this from the National Eye Institute perspective and the vision field overall with the premise that uh, the eye and the retina are essentially an accessible part of the brain. So we're talking about visual systems. Um, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, I only have one slide and it's got a few parts of it. And so, um, uh, so the topic is what is what can the visual field contribute to this discussion? Um, uh, the biggest thing is that um, uh, over the past 20 years, we've uh, had enormous technology development, um, moving from qualitative to quantitative diagnostic and care paradigms. Um, you know, when I was a resident uh, 20, 25 years ago, I had to use this contact lens to learn to examine all the nuance of the optic nerve and the retina structure. And you know, we drew it on a piece of paper like this. So we used words and pictures to describe what we saw. If you go to the next, if you push the button, please. Um, uh, nobody does that anymore. Um, now there are imaging methods um, uh, like OCT and uh, photography, you know, other imaging technologies uh, that translate all this to numbers. Uh, and that really opens up the potential for things like telehealth and artificial intelligence. Um, I know David talked about telehealth and uh, the first FDA cleared autonomous artificial intelligence diagnostic system in any field of medicine was for diabetic retinopathy, okay, a group at the University of Iowa. And, and, and that's because there are so many images um, in the visual uh, field, uh, you know, usually of the retina, coupled with um, uh, uh, clinical outcomes data. And so that's a great, great um, uh, system for AI and data science. So methodologically, uh, I think that there's a lot that, um, uh, uh, that we can learn about. Um, uh, and what's the impact of it? Um, maybe these systems through telehealth and AI can help improve access to care for medically underserved populations. And um, you know, another factor is that um, uh, maybe they can help improve the cost of care. Uh, there has been an enormous amount of research, um, uh, you know, just within the past five years, uh, showing that uh, in particular retinal images, uh, usually from OCT, optical coherent, coherence tomography, um, uh, can create, um, you know, uh, by, uh, can uh, 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 create, uh, can produce biomarkers that really help either diagnose or predict uh, systemic disease, uh, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, stroke, uh, cardiovascular disease. Um, you know, there was a recent paper on um, uh, schizophrenia and you know other other sorts of um, you know uh, psychiatric illness. And so, I think if that's really true, and if we don't need um, you know MRIs uh, to do that, or if retinal images can produce that uh, earlier, uh, then maybe we can improve the cost of care. If you can push the button again, please. Um, I think another um, potential benefit is big data and registries. Um, I put down here iris registry is one um, example that there's a big folklore of big data in the visual field. Um, it happened to be a, a, a registry that was created by the American Academy of Ophthalmology um, about um, a, 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 a eight to 10 years ago uh, that has now become, to my knowledge, the largest um, uh, specialty registry in any field of medicine anywhere in the world. It has data on 450 million eye exams. And um, uh, the Bridge to AI project is an NIH-funded common fund um, project, uh, basically $130 million um, over four years to generate data sets, um, flagship data sets. And one of the four principal investigator groups is led by two ophthalmologists, um, Aaron Lee and Cecilia Lee at the University of Washington. And the reason that I mentioned big data and registries is that it was alluded to earlier, um, uh, Ms. Highsmith um, uh, talked about it, uh, risks of bias. Uh, you know, if we create AI algorithms that have bias uh, built in, uh, you know, th this, this is going to make the problem worse. Uh, and so hopefully having large um, data sets that really represent the whole population uh, can not only help us um, uh, 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 prevent that, but also find ways to detect bias and minimize bias. Uh, there are also a lot of questions about privacy, um, you know, challenges of historically marginalized groups. And uh, you know, I, I think that big data is going to give us an opportunity to um, uh, study those. And really, the important thing is that 
uh, you know, we've got to think of technology as a mechanism to narrow uh, the gaps uh, between populations, not to further widen them. And I think this is a big uh, potential risk. And if you push the button one last time, please. And one last thing that I think that we can uh, contribute is, um, you know, there's a unique pos uh, a, a population of visually disabled um, people uh, who have a lot of um, challenges now. Here's a um, headline from the New York Times. Uh, blind people were not able to use home COVID tests because they can't see the pink lines uh, and they can't read the instructions. Um, and so, so I think that there's a lot that we'll need to contribute in terms of, you know, how can we narrow the gaps, um, you know, for those, uh, for that population, especially because there's a, such a large overlap uh, between uh, patients who have visual loss together with um, uh, aging and other neurological um, disorders. Uh, so I'm going to stop there, look forward to the discussion, and thank you very much. Thank you so much, Michael. Looking forward to uh, the discussion as well.